Welcome back to another episode of Happy Go Lucky Beho Reviews. Today we will be talking about one of my favorite systems of all time, the Sega Saturn, and about the RPGs I enjoyed on that system before they drastically changed with Mass Effect, The Witcher, and Dragon Age. My Sega Saturn collection primarily consists of fighting games, but there were some good RPGs that came out as well. The only problem was they were mostly in Japanese, and I needed walkthroughs to help me guide through the game most of the time since I don't read Japanese. Sorry to say, Panzer Dragoon Saga is not on this list because after I bought it at Toys R Us, I never really got the time to play it as I went to college. I sold the game later for a pretty hefty sum and is a game I may want to check out in the future since it's hailed as one of the best RPGs on the Sega Saturn had to offer. Until then, here is my list. We start with Albert Odyssey, Legend of the Eldian, released by Working Designs in North America in 1996. Originally made for the Super Nintendo, the game was later ported to the Sega Saturn. Traditional Japanese RPG is what you're going to get here, similar to the early Final Fantasies and Lunar series. Normal hero who has a family murdered, raised by harpies to save the world with a magic, uh, magical sword as his friend. It's nice ride, but forgettable due to the saturated market the RPG was at this time. I remember this mostly due to it being released by Working Designs, and they go all out on the packaging. Dragon Force was developed by Sega and released by Working Designs in 1996. Hailed as one of the best tactic RPGs on the system, the immense battles are what draw you in. Similar to Dynasty Warrior series, where this is a where there is one main super general with a super army versus another super general and their army. The generals usually are the hardest to take down, but once you do, the battle is won. I spent numerous hours on end playing, trying to outsmart my opponent. My way of winning always had just enough archers to take out the first wave. In late 1997, Game Arts released one of the finest games to ever grace the Sega Saturn, Grandia. The idea of a 3D world was unthinkable during the Saturn era, and Game Arts proved everyone wrong. They just didn't prove them wrong, they did it well. So well, I think that the Saturn version is head over heels better than the PlayStation version. This world is gorgeous in 3D, with its textures and colors and 2D sprites for the characters. Grandia is one of the finest RPGs with an excellent story and a new battle system that has yet to be adopted as the norm. A remake of the old classic Sega CD game, Lunar, was released in 1996. The game comes through with more full motion animations, music redone for the better, and more character interaction to flesh them out with a great story. The Lunar series was so popular since Sega only had Fantasy Star at the time, it was always a refreshing take 
on the traditional Japanese RPG, but with music and love as its main focus. La, la, Prince's Crown was developed by Atlas and released in 1997. Their unique style to this 2D heavily animated RPG is a spectacle to behold. If game were art in design sense, then Prince's Crown was the best the Saturn had to offer. Every detail and nuance can be seen in everything you do. This game is tough and deep in Japanese, so seek out a walkthrough to help you out. This was my first time ever where I saw an artist's visual impression of a game was actually what was in the game. The last Saturn game I purchased for the Sega Saturn was Shining Force 3, released in 1998. Actually, scratch that. The last game I purchased was Final Fight Revenge in 2000, but I hated that game so much it was one of the games I sold with absolutely no regrets. Plus, I sold it for 10 times the price I paid it for, so that didn't hurt either. But back to Shining Force 3, I was so upset when I found out that it's a 25 to 30 hour campaign but it has episodes 2 and 3 that were never released for in North America. A really fun tactical game with great 3D graphics and had great fight sequences, just only one episode. Like most games, Shining in the Holy Ark was released in 1997 by Sega. This game was similar to Shining in the Darkness, which I thought had one of the best intros in video game history on the Sega Genesis. The game had you travel through dungeons in first person, and first person dungeon crawlers were not my cup of tea. But Shining in the Holy Ark has fantastic battle sequences that will keep you on course. <laughs> Released as a remake to the Game Gear version a year before, Magic School Lunar hit the Saturn in 1997. With updated graphics and added anime movies with sound, this game was to take place hundreds of years before Lunar, the Silver Star Story. Battles are now focused on magic, and boy do they go all out. The playthrough I had had only one true warrior, and the rest dealt with supportive or offensive magic, which was a sight to behold on screen. Released in 1997, SNK brought the unthinkable game, Samurai Spirits RPG. The game is based on the fighting games Samurai Showdown 1 and 2, but jumps in deeper into the story. The game is known for its hand-drawn art and animation for all the characters on screen bringing them to life. The Saturn and PlayStation versions had their animations cut immensely even though the RAM card option was available for the Sega Saturn. This game was never released in North America and a walkthrough is a must as everything is in Japanese except for the title screen. The backgrounds and characters look great, but I wish they implemented the RAM card to see what the Neo Geo CD users got for all that animation. The game does load definitely faster on the Saturn in comparison.
That's it for today on this episode when we're taking a closer look at my RPG collection for the Sega Saturn. Please like and subscribe to see more videos. Greg, take us out of here.